Hi, Jameer. It is a pleasure uh, to meet you and uh, speak with you about your pretty amazing, impactful movie uh, that really touched my heart in uh, several places from having, you know, my, my own baggage um, as an African-American um, going into spaces that were often hostile as a youth but trying to navigate youth and find joy in that. And um, I just really thought you did it so superbly with your collaborators um, from your cinematographer um, through your actors. And I just would like to welcome you. Thank you for bringing your movie to the New York Jewish Film Festival this year. And maybe um, start off with a question of what this movie has um, meant in your life, having done it, uh, maybe one or two of the big questions that this movie helped reframe or helped you think about differently, you know, weeks, months after doing it. And as well, perhaps if you can um, share with our audience just a brief about what you, how you interpret what the movie is about. Well, I was working on the film for, I think, something like 10 years. Of course, not every day, but the first time that I read it's the, the film is based on an autobiography written by Arya Charles Shalika. And the title of the book is um, A Wet Dog is Better Than a Dry Jew. And um, Arya spent his um, youth here in Germany in a, in, a, in a district called Berlin Wedding, which is a district where there uh, live a lot of people with Turkish and um, Arab background. So he was, I'm sure, the, the only Jew uh, growing up in, in this district. And Arya's parents came from Iran and um, they looked like, Arya looked like, like a Turkish guy and, and they thought he's Turkish and they asked where, where, are you, where are you from and he said I'm from Iran he didn't tell them that he's Jewish at the beginning and so they thought he is Muslim 100% and because he he made friends he was integrated in the community and he was in a gang then and they they had a lot of fights against other gangs and Arya was always on so to say on the front and he was fighting and that earned him a lot of respect and um when some of the, the um the, his his former friends or some of his friends um perceived that he's in reality not muslim but jewish uh, there was one one very good friend of his who said, like, uh, you can't be Jewish. You can't be Jewish because you're my friend. This is a, con a contradiction. He just couldn't believe it. And um, for me, it uh, reminded me very much. And that's probably because I'm not Jewish. I'm Catholic. But uh, we had I was um, born in Yugoslavia and Croatia. And we it used to be Yugoslavia till the 1990s. And then we had in the 90s, um, 1990s, this uh, big war going on and the whole country fell apart. And uh, the reason was that people overnight, mostly over, more or less overnight, um, began to hate each other because it, they belonged to a different religion. Even though until then, people were friends and married to each other. And um, so... Uh, the whole thing um, reminded me very much of my of my country and of you know judging somebody uh, different because you perceive that he or she has a different religion, even though you can be friend. So the um, very important um, topic of the film was what is more important, where you come from and your religion or your character, and this is something that drives the story in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, and um, it seems like it's a, a huge ongoing question that um, humans can't quite <clears throat> get around. I, I, I think what's so interesting about uh, this film is the level of, I guess, what, I'll, what is referred to as uh, passing, that this character is able to uh, you know, uh, the character of Sohail is able to sort of navigate both worlds uh, without 
and having to live with the pain of people speaking horrendously around him um, and yet being wanting to rebel against it and being complicit and being quiet and all of these different things. I mean, how did you, how, how long did you spend uh, workshopping characters, uh, your characters, your main characters, uh, Sohail, as well as Hussein, who is a pretty amazing um, study, uh, character study of a friend who has to see beyond borders, but almost refuses it until the very, until he's pushed over the edge. Mm. Do you mean in, in, in terms of the story or in terms of the of the actors, how they... Uh, in terms of the uh, actors, yeah. yeah okay. working with it. Uh, a lot of those actors didn't act at all. Uh, so because uh, I needed actors who were, you know, not really actors, but who could play them because they are those people. So um, I didn't take actors, but I took, uh, uh, we made an audition and we had maybe 50 50 young people who were interested in playing it. And prior to the, to the shooting, we made um, a workshop, which took maybe two or three months. And in those three months, we had the opportunity to meet very talented young people who knew exactly what they are doing because they, can't, they, they come from these uh, districts and they know the problems and they know how they behave. So what I did, uh, I didn't give them the screenplay. I just told them the story. And then step by step, we improvised every scene of the, of the film. And everybody has had to switch characters. Um, so everybody had the chance oh, to play, play the best friend. Even the girls sometimes played, you know, the aggressive Muslim leaders, uh, which was funny, uh, but it helped. And some... And, yeah. And also everybody, everyone had the chance to, to step into the Jewish perspective uh, and, to, and to switch, you know, the perspectives. And um, so they were very much prepared. And then at the end, I had, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to choose from very talented young, young actors and then to make an audition and to, and to see who fits together and who can play this role and who can play that role. Yeah, wow, that's pretty amazing. So everybody, yeah, literally walked in the shoes of each other in order to understand each other better on set. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I, also I, I, I was gonna say, I think you can feel it in the power of their performances. Yeah, thank you. And also they improvise their own language because they speak in, in this district, Berlin Wedding, uh, or very, you know, a slang, which is, mostly German, but a little bit Turkish, a little bit Arab. And I didn't, I couldn't write it myself, but they, you know, use their own language and that helped also very much to get in the character. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's a, I felt like um, why it struck me, it was more or less one of the first or first time in a while that I'd seen and felt experienced uh, this, you know, a three-year movie, of course, um, anti-Semitism, but within the context of everybody sort of being a, I guess what I would best call here, a minority or a, a person of color, I think it sort of added this whole new dimension to it that I'm sort of, you know, used to more seeing it, you know, from the perspective of, you know, it's the German against you know, the Jewish person or this or that. And um, I was wondering if that required, I don't know, like extra research or if it's, if it's impacting people in a particular way because it, it does have a nuance to it that is not really spoken about as often. And, you know, I think every form of prejudice should be spoken about color, religious, gender, all of these things. But uh, did you find that this sort of has a, a particular dimension that you're not, that one is not used to seeing? Um, well, there, there is a lot of anti-Semitism in Germany in the last five years, maybe. That's what my Jewish friends tell me. 
that's what they experience and um and i think it was very crucial that they uh, the characters and the actors you know behaved very um honest and i think i'm very grateful for them to be so honest because of course if they you know say something like all those prejudices that you have against jewish people uh it's not easy to see once yourself on on the big screen and say something like that for example the the character um fadi you know who is like the antagonist in the film with the blue jacket um he's such a kind person omar is his name real name and he's he told me when he saw himself on the on the big screen he was kind of oh is that really me he couldn't believe it um but he was very honest to to you know to show it and um i think this is this is um, something that i'm very grateful mm-hmm. great great yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a real it's a it's a real really powerful study um there's also so much fun and dynamism to it uh between um uh, you know so hills art <laughs> graffiti but between his pursuits uh being act and just i don't know i would just i would say you know the the friendships are so vibrant the 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 fights are so vibrant the love is so vibrant and i feel like music is also uh quite vibrant in the film itself it, it in it, in and of itself it's its own character uh what perhaps of the how you designed it um to be so contemporary what was the thing that you feel like you really spent a lot of time paying attention to to make sure it really like you know came to life as it did actually on every aspect that's what I, <laughs> that's what i loved about the project is that i like as a filmmaker that every aspect you know is 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 uh, is vibrant as you and thank you for saying that and also i loved the project very much because it also has a lot of humor it's not you know just just about antisemitism and um two things is i think two things were very important for me the one is if it was only about antisemitism i couldn't have made a film out of it and it would be only you know said and you this is something that as a society we have to fight against but it was also about you know the friendship between a jewish boy and and an arab friend and uh, love to the turkish girl so those three characters were bound bound together and that was very much uh, very much important a very important and the second thing is what you said about you know the, the the cinematic aspects i loved also about the project at the beginning people asked me okay it's a, you know something like a, you know you want to make a dirty little movie you know something like maybe on 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 video and always handheld and i thought no that would be the cliche i saw the film more like you know like an epic film and um like a you know big parable and that's i i was looking for images that were appropriate to that so my cinematographer and i we said okay we want to to shoot it on cinema scope and uh, oh. we had some handheld uh, scenes also but there but there were a lot of aspects you know what i liked about it you know the, the fight choreography took us weeks to to look like it is but every time i see it it's so you know so violent um but sometimes i have to laugh when i see it because i know how much what they do and how how uh, funny it was when they were you know working on it but when you see it on the big screen it's so violent but it's very very it was very interesting for me to see it how the, you know it's like a choreography on a um like a musical if you if you will and and so oh, all, yeah. all those aspects were were very interesting and i think they you know they clink together at the end yeah so so you did you did you had on an on set choreographer i mean it it really did it felt it was perfect and thrilling and and jarring i mean you know it really just leaps off of the page as uh one of the most hey 
I mean, I don't want to overuse, you know, and say shocking, but <laughs> it was shocking. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, did you, did, did you work closely with a choreographer? On, on this scene, yes, yeah, because, you know, it's every, every hit has to be uh, choreographed. It is something that you have to, you have to, to fight. If you don't do it right, it can be very, you know, dangerous. So we are working with a good uh, choreographer. And for me, it was important. I told him it has to look dirty and it has to look painful. Also for, you know, it's not like, you know, the Hong Kong movie where you, where you see uh, the choreography, the, the, the fights are, you know, staged very much. But, um, and it's, sometimes it, it, has, it has also poetry with the films of John Woo or so. And here I wanted to be more like uh, from life and really um, that you have the impression it's it's painful for 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 the for the people fighting involved. Yes, well, that that definitely came across. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm I'm curious about um, Selma and the character of Selma. The um, you know it's not only is she uh, so Hale's love interest and crush, and it's so endearing. But it feels like she herself has a very important pivotal role, like just uh, outside of them, what she represents. I don't know. Uh, perhaps you could just speak about what she meant to you and or to the others while being on set. She's For me, she's a very important uh, character because she's the we have only male characters, more or less, and she's the only female character. And and uh, by uh, not uh, betraying him, because she's the first who knows that he's Jewish, and she doesn't say it, but she's very much she doesn't know how to deal with it. And but so he knows that she knows that he's Jewish. So this is for him uh, an important step. Uh, an important uh, step to, to go a step forward and to say, okay, this is what I am, and I want to be, uh, I want to be uh, recognized for this, what I am. And um, Selma is also the character who says in this scene, you know, religion. If you love somebody, it doesn't matter where where he or she comes from. So I think this is something that male character would not be able to say and especially mm. not in this society and um i think she could yeah yeah it's yeah it's something that she can really she expresses so well and succinctly and makes you think about you know um uh, which was really an important pivot in the movie itself i'm um, um also wondering in terms of the, so the book, I guess, was originally, the, 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 the book that the story is adapted from was originally set in the 90s, mm -hmm. um, but is now today, uh, but, but, but it functions so, in such a relevant way today. Um, what was your, I guess, your thought in making it today uh, something rather than setting it back then? And do you feel like, are, are you still proud or, you know, uh, encouraged about that choice that you made? Yeah, I think it was the right choice. But at the beginning, um, my first drafts took place in the 1990s. But then we had uh, some of those anti-Semitic um, issues and um, uh, here in Berlin, where not only Arya Shalika had this experience, but also uh, two or three other young young people uh, who had the same experience, like Arya, and um, they had they had to leave their schools. And I think one is go went to Jerusalem, left left Germany, and the other two uh, young people um, went to the Jewish um, high school and left their schools. So I had the impression that it's today even more topical than it was in the 1990s. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And but I, I read somewhere and I often, you know, I often think about this myself and um, I was reading how um, your, maybe it was your cinematographer or you had stated how social media or maybe it was an actor who has social media maybe like uh, fuels some of this, these uh, divisions. Um, perhaps do you think that that universe really, the newer, the, the universe that we're in of, uh, that's, you know, no longer what was going on in the nineties, maybe what has made it so reach such a high point? Yes, that's right. Yeah, through, through all the social media and, um, Unfortunately, it does, and um, there is also one thing in Germany on you know on the schoolyards that you you um, insult other people, other other schoolmates, and one of the most insults um, that they use insulting words are to say "you Jew, Jew." So. Um, it was also for me important um, to, to, to show the other side. And also it's kind of a, for me, it's of course a film, a cinematic project, but it's also a peace project. And our film uh, has been shown a lot in schools, also as young people and to, to and I hope that, that it is, can help also to reduce those antisemitic words that we had and have. Mm -hmm. How have some of the young people responded to it? That's I'm so so glad to hear that you've been able to um, engage with youth over the film and um, just take it around and have some of them see this. Has has have they have they had positive reactions or felt that there was a lot of relatable storyline that they uh, storylines that they could relate to? Yes, very much because um, because of our improvisations prior to the film, and also because of me a lot of talking to the characters and actors and them also putting a lot of their um, personalities into the film. Um, you have the impression that you're really watching real people, and uh, for the Jewish community, it was a good film, of course, because it's the Jewish point of view. Um, more or less, um, there were also some complaints, but uh, more or less it was a good reception, but also in the Muslim community, because we didn't, okay. betray, we, we didn't betray them, you know, it's, it's just, um, we showed how it is, and we showed also the good, good, the good signs and good, the, the, the good sides uh, of, of the Muslim community, you know, how they are very warm, the warmth that they have, and the friendship, and the love that they have. So, because you had you have two very important Muslim characters, the, the yes. character of so Selma and the Selma. character of Hussein. Um, yeah, they, Hussein. Mm -hmm. yeah, they felt very very good about the film. Oh, great! Yeah, I felt like the you know uh, it felt like the filmmakers, storytellers behind this went out of their way to make sure it was balanced, and that's why it will just have. It, I, that's why it will carry so far because it, uh, you know, I, I, I would believe Jews, Jewish people, Muslim people, Christians can all sort of come together seeing these different perspectives walking mm -hmm. in different shoes. It's, it's the, I think the balance is really key to this story's authenticity and ability to, you know, speak to people's heart. Um, uh, just uh, two more <laughs> quick questions. Um, I thought, you know, I thought it was so beautiful that um, so Hale wore the Star of David mm -hmm. from his grandmother, and no matter what, he was carrying that, you know, around with him. Was this something that was an aspect um, written into the book, or was that something that you had added? Uh, well, actually no, actually, right. the, this was actually something from reality. Arya had at the beginning, he had his uh, necklace with the Star of David. And his father told him, like in my film, said, okay, uh, you know, um, 
we are proud to be Jews and it's okay that you have this necklace, but put it under your shirt because we're right now in wedding and it's not appropriate to, to show it to other people. So this was something from the reality. And I thought this was very important to show the beginning, then how he changed and also his development as a character at the end to, sh to show it and to, to be show it, right. show it, yeah. And to be up proud of it, to say, okay, this is something that belongs to me. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's it really it really holds a lot within. Um, it, it's almost its own part of the story. What would your hopes be for this uh, story in terms of its life for the months ahead? Uh, where maybe your plans or you know what's yeah, what 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 what's ahead for this movie itself um, as we all try to push it forth to different audiences, <laughs> ours included. Well, my hopes for the film, um, I I like it when I talk to people like you and I see it. Um, it did you not only like the film, but it was emotional to you, and this is something that I that I very much like. Um, we had a we had a bad luck bad luck with uh, COVID-19 and the lockdowns because a lot of festivals were, you know, um, didn't uh, took place. So um, I think it will, it will be shown also on Netflix and, you know, and then I, I, it's, it's like a baby that you have to release and then hope, hope the best, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and when I, when you said emotional, you 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 got it. I I'd watched quite a number of movies, but this was the first one I found this spontaneous tear. You know, after I was all excited and breathless, and I was just like, "Wow, it's such a it's such a physical experience." Um, you know, I just thought this is really great filmmaking. So thank you, thank you for that, and uh, really appreciate your time. And we wish you from the New York Jewish Film Festival on behalf of all of us, the teams, we really wish you the best with this and hope that it goes far and reaches far. Thank you very much, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.